Today I'm going to do some studies in Daniel. Okay, you know the four animals which I showed you before. I actually did a show on this map. And I'll show it again. Daniel chapter 7 and the four beasts that are associated with the four great religions of the earth. So I wanted to kind of elaborate a little bit more on that map as well as uh, read this article. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Happy Friday. So we have a question. How long? How long till the end of this wicked eon? How long will it take to fulfill the prophecy in Daniel? Okay. That's the title of this article. How long? When is Daniel when is Daniel 7 fulfilled? How long until the end will be reached? Where are we now in the course of its action? Such are the questions which heave our breasts and bring a sigh from our lips as we consider the wonderful way in which God foretold the future to his faithful prophet, Daniel. When did these beasts first appear? When will they disappear? At what time does the Western monstrous, which is Christianity, Christendom, Tramp upon all, all the others. When will she be destroyed? When will the eastern animals vanish? In which phase of their career do we find ourselves? To such questions as these, we now address ourselves as we close our contemplation of Daniel's vision of the four animals. A fresh study of these wild animals in Daniel has deepened many, my conviction that our study of prophecy has been unbalanced. <clears throat> the political side of the earth's redemption has overshadowed the religious or spiritual aspect. We make too much of man's rule over his fellows and too little of man's relation to the spirit world, to God and to the powers of evil in the realms above. Some of the, some of the saints have been led to see their preponderant place of, of Israel in God's plan for the earth. Yet it is far from the, the full function of Israel to bring peace to the nations. That is only a means to bring them to God. It is the activities of the four spirits of Daniel that fill this day of man so full of strife. Just as it is the confinement of Satan in the next eon, which, which secures the peace of, the, of that Halion day. The moment he, he is loosed, war commences once again. I am satisfied that the religious side of prophecy has been greatly neglected or ignored, and it is to this that we owe much of the confusion of this theme. We are aware that in some respects, the interpretation of the four animals here presented differs from that presented many years ago by our close friend and collaborator, v Vladimir Gelisnov, in the coming conflict. Since then, much light has broken forth from God's word, especially from the unveiling of Jesus Christ, and for, from a more concordant rendering of Daniel itself. This has confirmed the main points in which the preceding study differed from popular interpretations. The four animals are not parallel to the great image, but now we see that they are, part, they are parts of the nondescript of the unveiling. Hence, they deal with the religious powers of the earth as inaugurated by evil spirits and directed by the great, great dragon. We are sure that our brother would be pleased with this new light and accept it, for this was his constant attitude during our long, delightful fellowship. And this is speaking of Enoch and Vladimir, Vladimir Gelisnov. They were good friends and brothers in Christ, and they fellowshiped and studied a lot and done a lot of work. for the unsearchable riches. When we consider the vision of the great image, we find that it, is, it, ha, it was given during, not before the time of which, which it spoke. Several years had elapsed since Nebuchadnezzar had begun to reign, so that the head of gold included some of the past. Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar, you are the head that is of gold. Moreover, though Nebuchadnezzar saw the whole image, some of, some of it did not exist at, at the time, but came later. As the chest of silver, Medo-Persia, was to arise years afterward, and Greece still later. 
while the toes come along after the rest was passed and gone. We should not tie an interpretation rigidly as to time. The kingdoms that appeared all at once were successive. So it may be with the latter vision also. There is no time given for the rising of the animals. In fact, it seems that Brahmism was already ex in existence, having commenced about 1200, 1,200 before Christ, 1,200 years before Christ, in the period of the judges, about 600 years before the vision was given. Buddhism, the next in order, came on the scene about the time of the vision, in the 6th century before Christ. Though Christianity, in one sense, started in the 1st century, it had no authority until the beginning of the 4th century. It did not become Christendom until the time of Constantine, when it became a power in the earth. Mohammedism rose in the early part of the 7th century. There is, less, there is less time between the rising of these animals than is usually allowed between the head of gold and the toes of the image. We may reckon the cessation of the flight of Buddhism at, at about 500, 500 years after Christ when the lioness' wings were scraped smooth. Perhaps at that time also she was set up on her feet and the heart of a mortal granted to her. China and Japan had been comparatively pacific and, and, and inoffensive for a long period, periods in their history. Buddhism has no crusades or conquests over those of, of another faith. It was chased out of India by the more ferocious Brahmism. Compared with other faiths, it had been it had been, it has been tame. It has not conducted any holy wars like Islam, and now and it is now having much of the civilization uh, and ferocity of Christendom forced upon it. We would hardly think that it deserves to be figured by a lioness. The, the action of the first animal may be applied to the past. The case. The case, C-A-S-T-E-S, -E case of the Hindus and the ascendancy of Brahmins, Brahmins who fatten themselves on, on the other seem to go back to the earliest eras of the Brahmin religion and to continue throughout more than 3,000 3, years to the present. Islam flew in all directions, almost from the beginning. It spread from the Spanish peninsula on the west to the in, to India on the east it knocked at the gates of Vienna in the 16th, 16th century in the south it enrolled many uh, an african chieftain under the green banner of the prophet there seems to be no specific action ascribed to this animal only as applied to the wings so they probably refer to its character rather than its history the fourth animal up to the time of the last horn gives us a good conception of Christendom, grinding and pulverizing its own people and stamping upon foreign face with her feet. We see that the West, Western Christendom is the most ferocious beast. Okay, Christianity is what it is. It is a ferocious beast. It is going to stamp on the rest and amalgamate it into one, one horrible, horrible monstrous. And I'm telling you that flat out. Don't go to church. Don't associate yourself with religion. Don't associate with yourself with Christianity. That Christendom monstrous is coming and it is building itself from west to east. Okay? So that's how it goes. West to east. East to west. No, let me look at the map for a second. It's east to west. Sorry about that. East to west. Right? So, honestly, that's right. The Eastern religions are being amalgamated to Christendom to become that monstrous. Do not associate yourself with it. Okay. How terrible has been the tale of her religious persecutions and inquisitions and conflicts? Let us take the Thirty Years' War between 1618 and 1648 as an example. It left the lands it devastated with only a quarter of the population still alive, as this, as this many probably were born during its course. It practically wiped out all of the original population. 
Such was the love of two great Christian communions for one another. What Christendom has done in, this, in the name of Christ is far more terrible than all the heathen, heathendom has accomplished in the name of their false deities. The place of Roman Catholicism. Instinctively, the Lord's people have felt that, that such animals, are, as here depicted, must include their persecutors such as Roman Catholicism. And in this, they were right. But many have found that the same spirit reigns in, in the other divisions of Christendom. The difference is only one of degree and one of power. The Roman church certainly is not the Antichrist. Okay, get that. Okay, they're here. Okay, Roman Catholicism is not the Antichrist. And the Pope is not the false prophet. I do not believe. Maybe he is. But honestly, you cannot associate really the Roman Catholic Church with the Antichrist. You can associate Christendom with the Antichrist and somebody coming forth out of Christendom, that monstrous beast, as being the Antichrist, the one instead of Christ coming, right? For it has not gone the lengths to which we, he will go. It is not mystic Babylon for that presents to us unfaithful Israel, as we have elsewhere shown. There are other evil organizations besides the Roman confession. Yet no doubt, it provided a prime part of the monsters seen by Daniel. For some of its horns are all, almost exclusively Catholic, which others are largely so. This we, have, we submit is the true place of Catholicism and prophecy. Okay, that's where I'm going to stop today. So, Roman Catholicism has a part in it, as do all the other sects and religious part, right? Okay, so Christendom is married into one big monstrous. So they're all part of it. These heinous religions and sects of the religions. That's like India. India has many false gods, so they worship many gods and many lords. But for us, there's one God and Father out of whom all is, and we for him. We do not associate ourselves with religion of the earth, because if you do, you're being married to it. Well, I sure as heck don't, anyway. I know that, and, and many of the true believers, which are my brethren, do not associate themselves with it either. So there you go. If you want to be religious, then you're away from God, because God's Spirit lives in you. You don't need a church or a sect or a religion to worship God. He is in you. Our communication is direct through Christ to God our Father. We are next to God, the Father in Christ among the celestials in spirit right now. So why do we need to worship other deities or worship uh, these heinous religions? So I'm going to expound upon Daniel a bit more about these beasts and continue to read that because it's important stuff to know. We know where we're coming to this time where those beasts are going to be amalgamated into one monstrous. We know that. But the big question is, how long? I haven't answered that yet. I've got to continue on reading here, and I've got to continue telling you that our time is imminent, moment to moment, expectation. I said that yesterday, moment to moment, expectation. We don't have a specific date or time that we're going to return to our Lord in the air and meet him. We can, we can gather through prophecy, though, we can gather through prophecy and through what the scriptures actually say of the era and the time frame. We don't have the exact moment when we're going to be snatched, but we can give a time frame there, right? It doesn't have to be a specific date, though. I'm not a date setter. Because when the date comes and passes and nothing happens, then what do you do? You look like a fool like the rest of the world. Date setting. That's exactly it. Anyway, happy Friday. I love you all. Thank you for listening to my show. It was a long one today. I'll see you Monday and continue on with this study.